In Unity ECS, you can only add one data component of a given type to a single entity. Or can you? Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, we're going to be talking about dynamic buffers, which can be used to store multiple data components on an entity similar to an array or a list. So first I'll be talking about the theory behind dynamic buffers, how they work, when you might want to use them, and I'm going to be showing you how to actually set up dynamic buffers and use them in an actual project. Um, by using this little fishing simulator game that you see playing behind me. And in fact, a little Turbo Makes Games trivia for you. This is actually the second fishing simulator I've made. Um, I made a game a little while back, which was a tower defense fishing simulator called Email Fishing um, for a game jam a couple years ago. Um, I think I did a couple videos on the channel about it, so I'll maybe leave some links up in the description for you. But anyways, that's not the topic of today's video. Today's video is all about dynamic buffers. Before we get into it, I'd just like to say if you do find today's video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's Entity Component System and their data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev Discord. So dynamic buffers give us a way that we can associate array-like data with an entity. Now, it can hold a variable number of these elements, and we can resize the dynamic buffer if we need to. Now, these elements can basically be any type of data component. You know, we can have simple things just like integers or some custom data components. So dynamic buffers are best used for, well, dynamic data, data that's going to be changing throughout the life cycle of our application. Maybe we're going to be adding and removing things to this buffer, or maybe we're just going to be changing values on this buffer pretty frequently. So that's the best use for these dynamic buffers is when we, when we want to have you know a set of data that needs a number of elements that is going to be changing throughout the life cycle of our application and furthermore each of these entities can basically have their own dynamic buffer in which a different set of elements can be stored on each one of these now one important concept that we need to keep in mind with dynamic buffers is an attribute known as the internal buffer capacity now by using this internal buffer capacity attribute it gives us some control about where the actual data lives in memory. So basically, if we have anything, a number of elements less than this internal buffer capacity that we set, uh, less than or equal to, I should say, then that data is actually going to be able to live inside the actual chunk um, with our entities. Now, if we go over that internal buffer capacity that we set, now all that data set inside that dynamic buffer is actually going to be moved out of the chunk and into the heap. So it's going to be a little bit less performant if we have the memory off in the heap, because you know when the CPU actually processes that chunk of data, it's gonna have to point to another memory location in order to look through that dynamic buffer. So now we can kind of choose what we want to set this internal buffer capacity to be. And so when we're actually determining what we should set this number as, we need to keep a couple things in mind. Now you might initially be thinking, you know, let's set this value kind of as high as we possibly can. So then all that data is basically going to live inside the chunk. And that's going to be the most performant. Now that's not necessarily going to be the most ideal because it's going to allocate and block off a large chunk of memory inside that chunk. So then we're not going to be able to fit as many entities inside a single chunk as we normally would. And then so now if we have a lot of entities, we're going to have to allocate a lot of different chunks. And we're not necessarily going to have the best chunk utilization if we're not actually filling those buffers up to near the maximum amount. So now we kind of actually want to bring that number down a little bit so we get to the point where, um, you know, we're, we're still not allocating a bunch of memory off to the heap but we're still just kind of like in that, that right middle zone where we have a realistic number of these elements that are fitting inside the chunk and we can fit the maximum number of entities inside the chunk without having to push these dynamic buffers off to the heap. And I'll say that if you don't totally understand this at this point, that's totally fine. Um, I do plan on making a video in the future kind of going over some debugging and performance monitoring tips for Unity ECS. And I'll be going over how we can actually monitor our chunk utilization and things like that. But for now, just kind of set the internal buffer capacity to a value that feels right for your game. You know, what's going to be the most likely scenario for how big that buffer is going to get. All right, so here we are over in Unity. Not a whole lot to point out here other than um, my beautiful drawing of a fisherman here. Basically, the idea of this project is we're going to be uh, catching fish when we press the space bar. 
And then we're basically going to be tracking the length of each fish that we catch throughout, you know, the duration of our little fishing simulation here. Um, and then at the end, once we catch eight fish, then it's just going to display the lengths of all the fish. So we're basically going to be storing the lengths of each fish inside a dynamic buffer. Um, by the way, you can download all the project files and code featured in today's tutorial video using the links in the description below. So when working with dynamic buffers, the first thing that we need to do is define a single element, the type of a single element of our dynamic buffer. So in this case, we're just going to make a public struct, which we're going to be calling the fish length buffer element. And then it's going to implement the I buffer element data. So not I component data as we normally would uh, in ECS, but it's I buffer element data. And that's basically going to be saying, you know, hey, this is a element that can be used in a dynamic buffer. And then here's where we actually define the data type that's going to be on our buffer, buffer element. So in this case, it's we're just going to do a public integer and we can just call this value here. So this is basically just going to be the length value of the fishes that we catch. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this data type can basically be, you know, any data component that we want. It's still going to be uh, subject to the same limitations of a regular component data. Um, so, you know, we can't use like uh, managed classes or things like that. So we can just only use blittable data types, things of that nature. But you know, any custom data components that we want, we can basically make it part of this buffer element. Now, if we want, we can have multiple types of data. So maybe we can also have like an enum for the type of fish it is or a float for like the, the weight in grams of the fish or something like that. But these buffer elements work best when there's just one single element. And I'll show you why that is. There's a couple of reasons. So the first one is um, here we can actually do a generate authoring component. And what this is gonna allow us to do is when we come back over to Unity here, we can go on to any game object and here we can just add the fish length buffer element. You'll see that it actually gives us acts, like it basically gives us an authoring component, component for a full dynamic buffer. Um, so you'll see that there's just kind of like this little values drop down and then there's a list here. So we can actually you know, define what we want for each of these elements. So we can say, oh, we caught a seven inch fish and here we caught a nine inch fish or a um, 13 inch fish. Now this only works if we just have one single value on our buffer element. So that's kind of one advantage is if you do want to define things through um, like an authoring component like this, that's one reason that you might do that but we don't need that now. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove that component. And then as I mentioned in kind of the theory section of the video, here's how we can actually set the internal buffer capacity. Um, so we basically just do a new attribute called internal buffer capacity, and then we just pass in the integer for the essentially maximum capacity that we want to allocate the dynamic buffer in the chunk. Now, in this case, I've chosen a value of eight because basically in my fishing simulation system, we're only gonna catch up to a maximum of eight fish before it displays the results to the player. So we know that the maximum in our game will never go above eight. So that's kind of a good place to start at. If we say went to a value of 10 and the player could only catch eight fish still, then that's just gonna be kind of a waste of memory because it's allocating memory for, you know, memory that's never actually going to be filled up with any data. Now, if we went lower to say like a value of six, then when we catch fish number seven and eight, it's actually gonna move the values of this entire dynamic buffer out of the chunk and into the heap of memory, which is going to be a little bit slower for the computer to access. So now I'll show you how to actually add a dynamic buffer to an entity. So over here in my fishing simulation system, um, just in the on start running function here, we you see that I have a, a variable called fisherman, which is just an entity variable. Um, we'll set this equal to entity manager create entity to just go ahead and create an empty entity for us to play around with. Now, the way we add a dynamic buffer to an entity, uh, very similar to adding a data component to an entity. So of course, we'll just use the entity manager. This time we're going to use the add buffer. Inside the type brackets, we're going to put in the type of buffer element that we're basically going to be um, wanting essentially a dynamic buffer of. So in this case, it's going to be the fish length buffer element. And then inside the parentheses, we can just pass in the uh, fisherman entity right here. Now that's basically all we need to do to add a dynamic buffer to an entity. Now you'll notice the add buffer function, if you hover over it, you'll see that it returns a type of dynamic buffer with type of fish length buffer element. 
you'll see that I've defined a variable up here for a private dynamic buffer type of fish length buffer element just called fish log. So this is basically going to be the actual essentially array of data that we're going to be um, tracking the length of the fish that we catch in. So one thing that we can do is just go ahead and do um, a fish log equals entity manager dot add buffer. So now we have a reference to this fish log here. Now I will point out that this is a little bit dangerous because when structural changes are made in your game, this dynamic buffer reference is actually going to break. So basically anytime that we want to add data to it, it's always good to just go ahead and actually get a new reference to that data. So now I'm going to show you how to actually add data to a dynamic buffer. So just in our on update function here, um, you'll see that basically we're just waiting for the player to press the space key. When they do press the space key, we're just going to go ahead and run some catch fish logic, which basically just kind of shows some UI on the screen. There's not a whole lot of craziness happening there. Um, but if we did catch a fish, then we're going to go ahead and generate a random length for a fish. If you haven't seen my video on using random in Unity ECS, I would highly suggest checking that out. I'll leave a link up in the card as well as in the description below. So anyways, if we did catch a fish, we're just going to go ahead and again, get a new fresh reference to that uh, dynamic buffer just by doing fish log is equal to a get buffer type of fish length buffer element. And then we can pass in our fisherman entity here. So now that we have it, we can actually just go ahead and add some elements to this. So we can just do a uh, fish log dot add, you know, very similar to like something that we'd do for a list. And then you'll see that it's, it wants us to t pass in a type of fish length buffer element. So we'll just go ahead and create a new fish length buffer element. And then we can set this value equal to the fish length, which is just that random value that we generated here. So that's basically all that we need to do for adding things to the dynamic buffer. Then coming over to Unity here, if we press the play button and then we press the space bar, you'll see that we catch a six inch trout. Go ahead and start fishing again, press the space bar and we catch a 10 inch trout this time. We can go ahead and do this a few more times and you'll see that we now have a 14 inch trout. So now if we actually come over to the entity debugger, you see this entity three is just that new entity that we created in code here. You'll see that, you know, all it has on it is just this Fisher length buffer element. You see that it has a size of three because we have three elements here again, and now it's keeping track of the length of fish that we catch. So you'll see that there's, you know, six, 10, 14. And as we continue to fish, you'll see that we now caught a 22 inch fish, a nine inch fish. Now, one thing that I should point out is there's actually a much cleaner way that we can add elements to this dynamic buffer. So this kind of goes back to one of the advantages of just using a single data value for our buffer elements. So what we can actually do here is we can create a public static implicit operator, which is going to return us a fish length buffer element, which takes in an integer just called value. And then here, this is just gonna go ahead and return a new fish length buffer element, setting the value property equal to the value value that we're passing in. So that means we can come back to the fishing simulation system. We can basically just get rid of all this. And then when we do fish log dot add, we can just pass in the fish length just like that. And in the operator, it's gonna go ahead and create a new fish length buffer element it's going to pass in this value here. So again, we'll come over to Unity. We'll hit the space bar a couple of times. You'll see that we catch some fish, go to the entity debugger, and you'll see that we've tracked the length of these fish here. Now, the last thing that I'm gonna show off is basically a cool way that we can kind of total up the uh, lengths of the fish that we caught. So we'll just do a simple for loop here, just going from zero to the fish log dot length. Again, we can just use the dot length, similar to like we would do um, on an array or a list or something like that. So if we wanted to say print out the length of each fish that we got, we can just go ahead and access each element by using the underscore fish log at position i dot value. So, you know, very similar to accessing something like we would in an array. And again, we just have to do the dot value because we actually um, need to actually get the value off this here. However, if we are using, you know, pure integers, say we wanted to use um, like this total length here so we can actually add up the total length of all the fish that we caught, we can do another one of these implicit operators. So I'll just make a public static implicit operator. This time it's going to return an integer 
and actually take in a fish length buffer element, which we just call element. And then so here, we'll just go ahead and return element.value. So the advantage of this is when we want to total up the total length, we can just say total length plus equals the uh, fish log at position i. And then we don't need to put the dot value at the end. And that's basically how we can total up the total length. So now if we come back to Unity and we just go ahead and catch a couple of these fish, you'll see that uh, once we catch uh, up to eight of these fish here, then you'll see that it kind of gives us this little final end screen that says you caught fish with the lengths of 6, 10, 14, 22, 9, 21, 15, and 23 for a total length of 120. So anyways, that's basically the gist of how to use dynamic buffers in Unity's entity component system. I hope this you know kind of gave you a little bit more insight about how we can um, have one entity track multiple data components. So it's, as you can see, it's pretty similar to just using an array. There is just a little bit of um, kind of setup that you have to go, additional setup that you have to go through that's kind of ECS specific. And there are a couple quirks and things that you do need to watch out for as you go along. So once again, I do hope you did find today's video helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's NT component system and their data oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for any future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord or at tmg.dev discord. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.